Okay, let's try to go on interview Hugh Jenkins working on the Bonarelli level. Here we go with other buddies. He's taking some notes. How are you? Yes. How's it going? Okay. So you're taking notes? Yeah. Do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? What do you want to ask? Hmm? Not too difficult. Just to explain to the health science community, students and researchers, what are you doing here? I'm um, measuring up the, the rocks and looking at the different rocks, some of which are white and some of which are black. And the black ones are much harder than the white ones, and the white ones are made of calcium carbonate, and the black ones are made of silicon dioxide, and they were formed in in an ancient ocean, or on the edge of an ancient ocean, around about 90 million years ago, and we're trying to understand what plankton was living in the water, and where these different types of rocks come from. Today there are plankton that have tests, tiny shells of calcium carbonate, and they make up limestone, and there are other plankton that have tests made of silicon, silicon dioxide, and they can go to form these rocks here, these hard rocks that we call chert. So the grey rocks are made up of the remains of a type of zooplankton known as radiolarians, no bigger than about one millimetre across. And the lighter coloured beds are made up of foraminifera, that's another type of zooplankton, but they have tests of calcium carbonate. And even smaller organisms, which are actually photosynthetic, they're part of the so-called phytoplankton, and those are called coccoliths, and they produce these white beds here. So what we want to understand is what controls changes behind when you get the white beds made of calcium carbonate from the foraminifera and the coccoliths, and what were the conditions in the oceans when we got these uh, siliceous, now called cherty beds, with the remains of radial area. So something rather fundamental was going on in the water column and that's what we seek to understand. Which is the relationship with the uh, anoxic event? Well, the so-called anoxic event comes in uh, several meters higher than this, and that event is characterized by the presence of very organic rich sediments, rich in organic carbon, and beds made up of remains of these siliceous organisms, radial area. And there are no coccoliths and no foraminifera so the anoxic event here is registered by beds that contain no calcium carbonate whatsoever. So again, we have to understand what caused the dramatic change in conditions. These beds here, these grey beds that we're looking at that have silica in them, they seem much more like the beds formed during the oceanic anoxic event than these white beds here that contain calcium carbonate from the remains of foraminifera you, you, and coccoliths. You, you, you described the... Uh for the first time the Oceanic Anoxic event. Yes, I was, uh, I was one of the people that did that. And, and so, how did you come up with this theory? 